Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great honor to be here today and talk about Capital for Purpose. Actually, a great theme, a great title. When I read it, I was uh, inspired, and I believe most of us uh, want to claim that we use capital in a meaningful way. But then at the second glance, I look at the title and I saw that there's no punctuation. No point, no question mark, no exclamation mark. And I wondered, is it uh, on purpose or is it a sign of the Swiss neutrality? <laughs> but le let's be clear, I believe that uh, Capital for Purpose does not need a question mark and be challenged, neither it needs an exclamation mark and be taken religiously. I do believe that Capital for Purpose is the core and the essence of good business. And over time, we have seen capital uh, changing. We have learned to decouple capital from its source of origin to its source of uh, impact. Uh, today, we can source uh, material in one corner of the world, manufacture it uh, in another place, and distribute it in 30 countries and plus, as we do at IKEA, for instance. And this also, we need to acknowledge, creates wealth and uh, uh, has helped taking people out of poverty. And capital has also changed in terms of perception. When I started to work many years ago, it was about uh, um, something tangible, even bulky, and now the perception is that there is more and more intangible components into capital. Uh, what it is saying, it is, it is that it fuels uh, business, but what it has changed is this cry for purpose that comes from uh, individuals, from communities, from society. And why is that so? I think that it is also because of the many changes that are happening as we speak. Digitalization, artificial intelligence, urbanization, uh, the gig economy, just to name a few. And we all ask ourselves, why do we do all that? So what it is needed, it is a compass uh, uh, that helps us navigate these uh, enormous changes. And I believe that leaders of all ages, uh, they do have a role, an important role in this, in helping people in organizations to, to navigate the unknown and to give them a purpose. At IKEA, our mission is to create a better everyday life for the many people. So people come first, and we should have people in mind in everything we do. Uh, this is why, for instance, we, uh, when we are create, part of creating a problem, when producing and distributing our products, we also want to be part of the solution. That's why we are changing our business model. Uh, for instance, we have been investing in the last year 2 billion uh, euros in re renewable energy, and we are transitioning from a mass production to a mass circularity. And there's more and more examples. In other words, when capital and purpose converge, we not only create value for a handful of shareholders, but we create value for people and for society at large. So maybe we can even dare changing slightly the theme into capital with purpose. Full stop. Thank you. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. My name is Ben London, and uh, I am a recovering management consultant. Um, in 2014, I left McKinsey & Company after several years to start my company, Pacify Health. We are a mobile health technology that allows women, particularly pregnant women and their families, to access medical care 24 hours a day through their smartphones. Um, this year, we'll help 20,000 families like that in the United States get access to care when they need it. We're really proud of that. Uh, that is our mission, it's our reason for being. But we're also proud that over the past five years, we've generated substantial returns for those venture capitalists who took a real risk on us, on our team, five years ago. My suspicion, because you're all here, is that you share my sense that in some ways, market capitalism isn't working out for us or for everybody. The climate is changing or warming. We're getting increasing income inequality. We have 
an entire generation of workers, in fact, many of you who are here today, who probably believe that your children will have fewer opportunities than you have had. In the wake of those disturbing trends, we've created all sorts of new structures and new ideas, new restrictions on the firm or on the corporation. They have fancy names like B corporations, statements of corporate social responsibility, all of these things that honestly feel like normal corporate business as usual with a charity attached to it. There's not necessarily anything wrong with a shoe company or an ice cream company giving a portion of its profits to charity, but is it scalable? Is it innovative? Is it really going to address those market failures that are underlying a lot of these things? I don't think so. I'd much rather us focus our efforts at this symposium in three areas. Um, one is that at the highest level, at the government level, we are way behind the game. We have politicians now all over the world who are comfortable acknowledging the market failures, but who are not proposing innovative solutions to actually address them. And we need a level playing field, or even a slanted playing field, to allow that market capitalist engine to address some of these problems. Second, within any level playing field, we need to acknowledge that that capitalist engine is still the most creative force we have, that creative destruction. If we're going to create big solutions that are scalable, new batteries to enable wind and solar, new telemedicine companies, new vaccines, they're going to arise where capital responds efficiently and effectively to market signals, not because we have fancy new structures. And third, and perhaps most importantly, I want us to refocus on the individual level, the decisions that we as investors or entrepreneurs make about where to dedicate our creativity, our capital, our efforts. If we can convince one young entrepreneur in this symposium to dedicate her life and to make her millions, frankly, building us that new battery, instead of building a new social network or a new video game, we'll have achieved an awful lot as a group. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Sarah Wahidi, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Ihtisab. Um, Ihtisab is an online-based platform which connects Afghan citizens to the government institutions which represent them. Um, the uh, inspiration behind Ihtisab uh, came to me while I was working as a specialist at the office of the President of Afghanistan. Um, at the uh, President's office, I focused primarily on social development policy, um, and with that, uh, I learned the value of, of social capital, and that was led primarily by uh, my boss, Mr. Khaybar Fai, who was a senior advisor to the President, and he really emphasized the importance of uh, social capital um, in all of the different types of projects that we were working on. So the World Bank defines social capital as the norms and networks that enable collective action. I've witnessed firsthand the importance of social capital in all facets of society in Afghanistan. And by an array of stakeholders working in cohesion and through a community-driven approach, effective services, better accountability, and transparency initiatives can be set in place. The people of Afghanistan are relentless, inventive, and overflowing with capacity. I am only one of the many examples of unconventional paths with the, with the Afghan diaspora that has shaped my journey thus far. My family left Afghanistan during the late 90s, and I grew up in a small suburban town in Canada. As I grew older, I became passionate about community development and supporting newcomers in my neighborhood. By 18, I was working at the frontline level of different nonprofits across Canada and focused on civic communities that were implementing different changes for civic engagement and promoting people to integrate better in Canada. Within a few years, I began researching service delivery methods and noticed a dependency on existing frameworks to facilitate the improvement of new initiatives. It was what continued to solidify Canada as an exemplary nation in the world, but I wanted to utilize this knowledge at a personal level. When I returned to Afghanistan a few years ago, I was amazed with the people that were implementing changes on a daily basis. They were formulating policies which had never dis existed before, and they were establishing new changes and visions at an astonishing pace. In Canada, I learned the theories and mechanisms, and in Afghanistan, I was able to establish them. Of course, there is a stark contrast between the Afghan and Canadian context, yet there are endless stories like my own, and probably many in this room, in which different experiences, expertise, and knowledge have amalgamated to becoming important tools at the forefront of policy development. We need to recognize and promote the value of social capital, especially now in our increasingly fast-paced and connected world. I truly believe through Ihtisab we can introduce this priceless asset of the human experience at the policy-making level and supporting Afghans in rebuilding and strengthening their nation. Thank you.